بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم gluten related disorders include a wide range of clinical conditions triggered by gluten ingestion in genetically predisposed individuals including celiac disease wheat allergy and non-celiac gluten sensitivity these disorders show diverse clinical symptoms involving post gastrointestinal and extra intestinal manifestations the extra intestinal manifestations can impact almost any organ including the skin in addition to the well-known link between celiac disease and dermatitis herpetiformis recognized as the skin specific manifestation of celiac disease numerous other mucocutaneous disorders have been connected to gluten uh, related disorders welcome again to derma immunology i'm Nagla el mongi professor of dermatology cairo university and our today video is gluten related skin disorders My main reference in this video is this paper, Skin Gluten-Related Disorders, New and Old Cutaneous Manifestations to be Considered, that was published in Frontiers Medicine, uh, 2023, May 2023. Gluten-related disorders include autoimmune reactions, example, celiac disease, dermatitis herpetiformis, and gluten ataxia. Number two, IgE-mediated allergy, example, wheat allergy. Number three, immune-mediated non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Gluten-related disorders present with both intestinal and extra-intestinal symptoms, which may involve the neurological, cutaneous, reproductive, and musculoskeletal systems. While the existence of extra-intestinal manifestations is well documented, their prevalence is still not clearly defined. The correlation between skin and bowel disorders in both children and adults is well supported by extensive literature. Also, a growing number of mucocutaneous diseases linked to gluten intake beyond dermatitis herpetiformis are being increasingly documented. The most likely hypothesis for the pathogenesis focus on the loss of the immune tolerance in genetically predisposed individuals along with increased intestinal permeability. This allows gluten-related peptides to be released, triggering an autoimmune response, vascular changes, and resulting in the malabsorption of vitamins and amino acids. Celiac disease is a chronic autoimmune condition triggered by gluten consumption, affecting genetically predisposed individuals of all ages and both sexes. The overall prevalence of celiac disease is approximately 0.5 to 1%. In these individuals, the intake of gluten or gluten-related proteins can initiate an immune response, leading to bowel inflammation and tissue damage. This process involves specific T cell populations pro-inflammatory cytokines, autoantibodies targeting an intestinal enzyme, and impaired regulatory T-cells. Also, changes in the gut microbiome or dysbiosis may play a significant role in celiac disease pathogenesis by affecting the gluten-mediated immune response. However, it remains unclear whether uh, this dysbiosis is a result or a, a cause of celiac disease. The diagnosis of celiac disease is based on a combination of genetic factors, clinical presentation, serological tests, and histological analysis. The detection of circulating IgA anti-tissue transglutaminase, or TG2, antibodies is the most sensitive serological marker for celiac disease. However, in seronegative patients with an IgA deficiency, testing for deamidated gliadin peptide IgG antibodies can be useful. Endoscopic biopsy provides relevant insights by revealing characteristic histological features such as lymphocytic infiltration, crypt hyperplasia, and varying degrees of villus atrophy. While many current guidelines permit a biopsy-free diagnosis of celiac disease in children under specific conditions, endoscopy and duodenal biopsies remains essential for definitive diagnosis in adults. Celiac disease is characterized by a wide spectrum of symptoms, Intestinal manifestations include diarrhea, abdominal distension, constipation, and malabsorption. Extra-intestinal symptoms, which can present as, as a first sign of celiac disease, include weight loss, weakness, anemia, reduced bone mineral density, recurrent abscess stomatitis, hypertransaminosemia, musculoskeletal pain, spontaneous abortions, epilepsy, peripheral neuropathy, and dermatological lesions reflecting the systemic nature of the disease. 
Humbert et al. 2006 proposed a classification of celiac disease associated skin diseases by dividing them into four categories, autoimmune, allergic, psoriasis, and miscellaneous. In addition, sporadic association with other skin diseases were subsequently reported. Dermatitis herpetiformis is now recognized as the specific skin manifestation of celiac disease. However, various other skin conditions have also been observed in individuals with celiac disease, including psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, urticaria, recurrent abscess stomatitis, rosacea, and vitiligo. The connection between celiac disease and the skin disorders likely involves shared genetic risk factors and biological mediators associated with celiac disease. For example, a recent meta-analysis identified an overlap of 10 susceptibility uh, loci for both psoriasis and celiac disease. Also, both conditions share similar immunological mechanisms as uh, psoriasis and celiac disease are T-cell-mediated diseases, and although celiac disease is generally considered a T-helper 2 mediated condition, immunological studies have highlighted the significant roles of T-helper 1 and T-helper 17 and uh, T-gamma-delta uh, cells in both celiac disease and psoriasis. Given the compromised intestinal barrier in celiac disease, it's possible that increased permeability to uh, immunogenic triggers contributes to the higher prevalence of immune-mediated disorders. A meta-analysis indicates that individuals with psoriasis have a three-fold increased risk of developing celiac disease. Also, the study showed a higher prevalence of anti-gliadine IgA antibodies in psoriasis patients compared to controls, suggesting a potential benefit of gluten-free diet in managing psoriasis in these individuals. Other research has also suggested a link between the levels of celiac disease-specific antibodies and the severity of psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis. Atopic dermatitis has been associated with a higher prevalence and incidence of autoimmune conditions, including celiac disease. One study reported that children with atopic dermatitis had a four-fold increased risk of developing celiac disease. Additionally, a case control study found that the frequency of atopic dermatitis was three times higher in patients with celiac disease and two times higher in their relatives compared to their spouse. Autoimmune diseases, including celiac disease, have also been associated with chronic urticaria. A significant connection has been identified between chronic idiopathic urticaria and various autoimmune disorders, including celiac disease, with reports of reduced flare-ups following the implementation of gluten-free diets. In a meta-analysis study, the authors found a higher instance of recurrent abscess stomatitis in patients with celiac disease. This association has primarily been examined in pediatric populations. It remains unclear whether recurrent abscess stomatitis lesions are directly affected by a gluten sensitivity disorder or if they are linked to deficiencies in serum iron, folic acid, vitamin B12, or trace elements resulting from malabsorption in un untreated celiac disease patients. Additionally, local and systemic conditions, as well as immunological, microbial factors, and oral dysbiosis may play a pathogenic role. A connection between celiac disease and rosacea has also been established. One study indicated that females with rosacea have a higher risk of developing celiac disease. Also, a nationwide cohort study found that the prevalence of celiac disease was greater among patients with rosacea compared to control subjects. The relationship between celiac disease and vitiligo remains a topic of debate. Some researchers have reported a higher incidence of vitiligo among patients with celiac disease, while others have found no correlation between these two autoimmune diseases. Other potential associations between skin diseases and celiac disease include lupus erythematosus, dermatomyositis, Pestis disease, pemphigus, linear IgA polus dermatosis, and lichen. Also, rare conditions such as Borrego nodularis, cutaneous vasculitis, necrolytic migratory erythema, erythema nodosum, betraeus lichenoides, porphyria, cutaneous amyloidosis, betraeus rubra bilaris, erythroderma, partial lipodystrophy, generalized acquired cutis laxa, ichthyosis, atypical mole syndrome, and congenital giant nevus have also been reported. Most of these associations may be regarded as coincidental, including the link between celiac disease and alopecia areata which has a prevalence in celiac disease patients comparable to that of the general population. 
And while alopecia areata sometimes improves or resolves with a gluten-free diet, the diet's effectiveness may be attributed to a non-specific normalization of the immune response. Secondary intestinal malabsorption can lead to mucocutaneous manifestations due to nutrient deficiencies. In patients with celiac disease, zinc deficiency has been linked to crusty erythematous and squamous dermatitis localized in periorificial areas, the genitals, and the skin folds. Additionally, those patients may experience diffuse alopecia, stomatitis, palinitis, vulvitis, and proctitis. Iron deficiency may be linked to conditions such as atrophy, xerosis, itching, hair loss, atrophic glossitis, angiosomatitis, and coelonychias. Additionally, betrayal rubropilaris like lesions have been observed in cases of vitamin A deficiency. Lower serum levels of vitamin B12 and folic acid have been associated with angular stomatitis, glossitis, oral ulcers, and hyperpigmentation. In terms of oral involvement, patients with celiac disease may experience various dental and oral mucosal anomalies, including animal defects, recurrent aphthous stomatitis, delayed tooth eruption, multiple cavities, angular chelitis, atrophic glossitis, dry mouth, and burning sensation in the tongue. One study identified a link between uh, perineal basal cell carcinoma and patients with long-standing untreated celiac disease, suggesting that celiac disease may increase the risk of skin malignancies in this area. This could be attributed to the chronic exposure of perineal skin to inflammatory molecules originating from the gastrointestinal tract. However, further research is needed to reach this association. So, a complete examination of all mucous membranes, including the anal mucosa, is important when celiac disease is suspected. There are currently no specific guidelines for diagnosis and treating skin diseases associated with celiac disease, aside from dermatitis herpetiformis. Histological, immunopathological, and serological examinations, along with other tests such as patch tests, can aid in achieving an accurate diagnosis. A gluten-free diet is essential for all patients and may be effective in addressing skin lesions in conjunction with established treatment guidelines. Dermatitis herpetiformis, a specific skin manifestation of celiac disease, affects approximately 13% of patients with celiac disease. The highest prevalence of dermatitis herpetiformis has been reported in Finland with an estimated 75 cases per 100,000 people. However, the incidence of dermatitis herpetiformis appears to be declining. And while dermatitis herpetiformis is typically diagnosed in adulthood, it can also occur in childhood and adolescence. In dermatitis herpetiformis, epidermal transglutaminase 3 rather than transglutaminase 2 serves as the primary autoantigen, which may help to explain why skin manifestations arise in some patients with gluten sensitivity. The pathogenic mechanism behind dermatitis herpetiformis is multifactorial, involving genetic, environmental, and immunological factors. In individuals susceptible to hidden celiac disease with a response to transglutaminase 2 and potentially transglutaminase 3 autoantibodies as well, the formation of skin lesions may occur due to the deposition of immune complexes in the walls of dermal vessels. This process involves high affinity anti-transglutaminase 3 IgA antibodies binding with transglutaminase 3 enzyme. The diagnosis of dermatitis herpetiformis is established through characteristic clinical presentation and immunopathological findings. According to European guidelines, direct immunofluorescence on a sample of perilegional skin is considered the gold standard for diagnosis. The pathognomonic finding consists of granular IgA deposits, which can show various patterns. Granular deposits at the tips of dermal papillae, granular deposits along the dermal epidermal junction, or a combination of both configurations. The most characteristic histopathological features include subepidermal vesicles and blisters with neutrophilic infiltration at the tips of the papillae. Isenophils may also be present within the inflammatory infiltrate in some cases. Additionally, small bowel mucosal biopsies are not essential for diagnosing dermatitis herpetiformis. Although the severity of mucosal damage can vary among patients with dermatitis herpetiformis, it appears to have no impact on long-term prognosis. Circulating autoantibodies specific to cutaneous basement membrane components or other adhesion structures are not detected in dermatitis herpetiformis. However, they show gluten-induced IgA autoantibodies that target transglutaminase 2 and transglutaminase 3. So in this video, 
I talked about the first category of gluten-related skin disorder, which is autoimmune reactions, celiac disease, and dermatitis herpetiformes. The next video will be about the other two categories, IgE-mediated allergy, example wheat allergy, and the third group, which is immune-mediated non-celiac gluten sensitivity. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and I'm reminding you again to subscribe to the channel and activating the alarming bell, and thank you.